everybody welcome to another facebook live wow two in one week it's exciting i'd like to introduce you to fern who's lying down and berry these were my two golden retrievers they were such an important part of my life my name's stephanie waitman if you haven't been to one of these facebook lives before it's a very very warm welcome i'm extending to you and so many of us have got fabulous pets or people that are special to us. I'm going to do two scrapbook pages in this quick Facebook Live because the collection I'm working with is called A Moment of Reflection. So let's take a little look at what's in the kit. We've got the details on the screen. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to flick through this really quickly so we get to the demonstrations. Now I've got a fabulous new USB that's full of beautiful backing papers and some really pretty scenes on there. Everything coordinating to work together. Then we've got our cross. Now the cross is actually nested and because of the way crosses work when you're working with them and you design them, as I get into the design and I get smaller and smaller, these are going to get very tall and very thin and that's probably not going to be the most appropriate shape for us to be able to craft. So what we've done is the 18 dies are nested by size to give you the most versatility. You've also got some little thought for ta thoughtful tags. We've got our pear drop heart for the very, very first time. Sorry, pear drop heart. It's a pear drop die. That's the first time that we've done a pear drop. Also got for you the rectangular lace element that's included. A fabulous embossing folder with some really heartfelt sentiments. I'm going to be cutting that and putting it through some um, through the machine in just a moment. And then to go with, and the details for this are actually on your screen, to go with this show, there are lots more other dies for you to buy individually. So something for every price point. This one's called the Perfect Entrance. Then I've got another one here that's called Tender Tulips. Another one called Lily, which is really pretty. And then we've got Precious Feathers. Now the charisma for each of these, you're going to find as a download, and it's also on the USB. The doves have been incredibly popular, as have the Over the Edge Cross. And then to finish off the collection, the other thing that we've got is our cardstock. And the cardstock, very subtle colors, they're quite strong in terms of the actual shade, but the tone of them is softer. So you've got here complementary colours that are going to work with the backing papers, work with your dies, and all of it is going to give us that designer look. So a few things we're going to need to do to get started. The first one is work with the embossing folder. So the tattered lace embossing folders are A4 edge to edge. It's important I share that with you because from one edge of the cardstock to the other, you're going to get a full embossed image, which does mean we don't end up with these white edges that or um, edges that are not actually embossed. Now, because this has come off a home inkjet printer, it does mean that I've got that white edge on there, but it doesn't matter because when I am going to be finished working with that, it does mean that I'm just going to trim the edges. I'm going to take the pieces I need out of the centre of it. Now, I should have probably removed my magnetic shim, but the machine's coping in with it really well. So I'm going to let that carry on going through the machine and go to my 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. If you're a beginner at scrapbooking, choose a subject that's really close to your heart one that you can really enjoy when you're working with it and feel the the love and all those happy memories so with that in mind i've picked two of my favorite pets and they were such a huge part of my life that i really want to build this page to actually be about them and what you'll notice is i've taken off one of the backing papers and here it has been embossed now that embossing is I can see it quite well. You're probably seeing it a little bit lighter, but I'm just going to take this ink pad and I'm sliding it across the actual letters to make them stand out and just gently sliding them round. So I've been quite gentle at the top here, but where the actual ink and the print gets darker, I'm going to be a bit firmer with my ink pad. So I'm really now you can see these starting to jump off the page. And that is the look that we want. So a graduated finish 
from the soft ink at the top down to where it's much stronger and then those words literally popping off the page. So let's take a little look at some of the other things I'm going to be working with. I've got two other backing papers that are of complementary colours. I've got the cardstock, which is from the Moment of Reflection cardstock pack. And these, you can see, have been chosen because of my photographs. So we've got the lovely rusts in the brickwork at the back of the house. And my goodness, I haven't lived there for 20 years. That brings back memories. Then here, those lovely greens that we've got so many shades of green in the grass. And then the lovely Berry, um, she passed on and Fern was with me when I moved to my next house. And you can see just how derelict and worn out it was. This was taken 20 years ago. So I've already done my mats and layers and I've chosen the size of those. And now I need to actually cut my photographs. And I'd recommend that you're actually, you take copies of your photos, especially if they're vintage or they're, they're your prized and treasured possessions. Please don't cut them up because you don't want to make a mistake. Photographs also, when you're scrapbooking, work really well when you use geometric shapes. So don't try cutting round the shape of them. You're not going to get as professional results. Start off with just squares or rectangles, circles or ovals. So I've taken a square die here and it's just a couple of sizes smaller than I've got of these two mats and layers. And I've also, I've angled the die so that I can get the best dis um, element of Berry actually in this, oh sorry it's Fernie this one, getting her in the actual picture and I'm happy with the shot that I've got there. So I'm going to go onto my cutting mat, I've taped the die onto the cardstock, I need to just move that out of the way and get the right size mat and I have somewhere on here got a piece of cut tidy. Now cut tidy is the magic. Cut tidy means that when you're working with it, it not only acts as an extra shim, but it also means that we get perfect cuts every time. So I'm just going to pass that back through the machine. And while that's working in there, let's talk about the composition. So we've got our mats and layers. Now, when you're working with a scrapbook page like this, if we move these out the way, we've got lots of different options of things we can do. I can mat and layer these perfectly so that I've got a, um, an equal border all the way round. So we could mat and layer just like this. And we could get something that's very geometric and very, very organised and structured. I could move the actual mats off so that I've got a totally different look. I could overlap the pictures and take them at slight angles. And you can see sometimes your photographs look fabulous when they're actually angled as well. So there are lots of different options with how you're gonna lay this out. And once you start to get more than one of your photographs and you're building your page, and I'm just going to take this little bit of tape off, you can start to see how your story comes together and I'm loving the results I'm going to get here so I'm now going to just do this one last cut I'm positioning it so that I've got as much of my lovely fur babies as possible and you know with things like sky I mean this is a perfect example you can see what's left I might use some of this maybe tear it and put it as a background in fact let me show you just a little idea of something we could do if I lift up this square and were to put this behind so it's not wasted. So there are things you can do with the waste from your photographs, but if it is the picture that you're cropping, try and get as much of the actual elements that are important to you in the frame of the actual picture itself. So let's pop this back through the machine and that gives me all of my designs. And hello everybody, if you've just joined and you're watching Facebook Live for the first time, it's a real pleasure to have your company. We're just going through a kit that's already launched on Create and Craft, but I want to give you a few more ideas with a brand called Tattered Lace. 
And for those of you that haven't watched Facebook Live before and have got questions, please leave those for me and I'll try and answer as many of them as I can. So I'm now going to take my last picture. And the other thing that's important when you are doing scrapbooking, these are treasured memories. So you need to think about the photographs. I would always use a copy if possible. And also the glue and the adhesive and the cardstock you need use. The glue and um, all of your cardstock, it all needs to be acid and lignin free. And I'm sure that at some point in the past, you've seen old photographs where they're peeling at the side and they've started to discolor. That happens when we actually get materials together that, are, that actually start to um, degrade each other. With really, really precious photographs, you see people scrapbooking, not only protecting their hands with barrier um, products, but also wearing gloves as well to protect the product that they're working with. We're not that precious. These are copies of my pictures, so I know we're safe. So I've now got my lovely little troop of puppies, and I'm going to put these to one side while I start doing some gluing and sticking. So the first thing is putting on this lovely panel. And I'm going to cut it down in size. I'm going to take off some of the print. Now, I tend to do a lot of crafting by eye. Please don't worry if you like it to be absolutely perfect. Um, for me, that that's not important. It's more about, do am I happy with the composition? And in my head, I have got a bit of a picture. And it's just, while I'm crafting, I am just having the most fabulous memories of Fern and Berry. When I met Carl, and it was, I met Carl um, not long after, I, I've been on my own a little while, let's just put it that way. And um, I met him and Carl's got two absolutely beautiful daughters. And the girls had come round and been, Daddy, Daddy, can we take the dogs for a walk? And when, when Fern was a baby, she actually, she didn't like walk. <laughs> she was a bit like a mom. <laughs> she, she didn't like walking. And so I had her to the vet so many times because I actually thought there might be something wrong with her. I worried about her enormously. And the vet said to me, he said, don't worry about her. You know, just very occasionally you do get, there's nothing wrong with her. It's not, you know, she hasn't got um, poorly back legs or anything like that. He said, um, what happens is every now and again, you can get a dog that is just not that keen on lots and lots of exercise. So, of course, that became quite a joke that she was like a mum. Well, she loved, she did love to go a walk, but she only liked it to go as far as she wanted to go. And so Kirsty and Catherine took the girls for a walk and they'd not been gone long before they're on the phone to their dad. And they were going, Dad, Dad, um, the, the do dogs have sat down. And he's like, oh, OK. Well, we don't know where we are because we've just gone for a walk with them and now they won't move and they're just sat still. And um, Carl had to say to them, don't worry, it's fine. They'll get up and walk home when they're ready. And sure enough, they did. When they were rested, they both got up and came back to the house and actually well, they knew the way home. And um, Fern was always like that. So she was a pleasure to have have there and you know um, a lot of you will know I've got Dalmatians now um, well I've got one Dalmatian and I've got a Labradoodle I've had two Dalmatians in between and um, I remember moving into the house so the one with the tatty patio we'd been in there not that long and the vicar who lived next door came round he said oh I've just seen your lot all walking down the road it's like really and he said yes he said I think Fern's taken them all for a walk and she'd taken all the little ones, the dogs, and they'd all gone for a walk. And sure enough, they were having a little wander down the road. And once she'd had enough, she sat down while they all waited. And then the whole little pack of them came back again. And I'll never forget that because it was um, one of my first introductions to the local vicar. And he did have such lovely complimentary things to say about how well behaved the dogs were. But... Little did he know some of the mischief that they got up, up to. But 
doing scrapbooking about our pets is one of those really special things that we get to do and this kit is fabulous for special memories. So I'm just building up my mats and layers. Now I'm doing this really quickly because I want to show you two scrapbook layouts in this show. And so I'm just going to do the third one of these and that means putting the glue on the back here. And always try and work with dry glue. It does make it so much easier. And of course, then it's not going to bleed with your cardstock. So I've got that there. I'm just going to put this on here. And then I want to show you a couple of other quick things. Now, the, the um, tulips have been cut out using the dies that we looked at very quickly at the beginning. And the reason they're already coloured is what we call Charisma, which is a printed sheet. And you just lay the die on top of it and pass that through your die cutting machine. So I've done that with both of these. So you'll see they're absolutely identical. The little lines on the back are actually cut lines. And they're where, if I want to make it smaller, I can just snip into it and snip elements of it away. So I could remove one of those tulips and it'll be left with just the one instead of the pair. But I want to get a little bit more texture and a bit more of a story in this. So now I'm ready to start looking at my layout. I'm going to be looking at where and how I want to balance my pictures. And you can see how just by moving pieces of this around and getting, so I'm going to put this right in the middle of the page. I'm putting this here and I could be just be putting one of the pictures there and the flowers either end. Each time you get a different look and feel and that is the part of the fun of the scrapbooking is not just planning your design and the layout but look how nicely that that um, just tucks in there but actually bringing the story together. Now, the other thing that I've got is there are some stamps in these collections and I've chosen some of the sentiments and I've actually got them on two of my stamping blocks. So I've already put them on, they're clear, so I can see where I'm going to position them. And this one says be strong and courageous. And then I've created like a little pattern for myself. I put three of them on one block. I'm going to ink them all in one go and I've got be kind to one another. I've also got um, let peace in your heart and faith can move mountains. And I've got all of those. So because I want to go over the green panel, I'm going to move everything else out of the way. And we're going to stick this piece down because we don't want it to move when we're stamping. So at this point, you need to have decided where it's going to go. And mine is going to fit about there. So I'm checking the text is the right way up. Got that in place and then going to use my block. So I'm just going to go back and re-ink it. It's quite warm in this room. So I'm just making sure the ink hasn't dried too much. And then I'm going to just use my block and I'm going to, let's see where this is going to go. I think I'm going to take it there. So walk your fingers over the block so that you get a good impression. This is why I really love my um, rare earth load and folds. But unfortunately, when you're working with 12 and 12, they're not quite big enough. But see how I've got my sentiments up there. Now, this will be a second generation stamp, so it'll be much lighter in colour, but it's still got a place on the design. So I'm going to put this one here and press that down. So you can see how much lighter it is. I'm just going to check where my second lot of papers are going to go. So I make sure I get the maximum amount of space. That one's going to go up there. I'm going to come off the edge there. So it looks like it's meant to be there. And there too. So I've got a nice little bit of um, pattern going on in the background. Now I'm going to place my print and remember we printed it off, we then put it through the embossing folder and then I've inked over the top. So I've got a really 
fabulous finish on this. And I'm going to pop that down. And just thinking about how I can finish the edges of this. And this it really is scrapbooking in the simplest manner. But it gives us a, a fabulous way of being able to tell the stories of our photographs. So I'm looking at the distance that I've got here and the distance I've got here because I want this page to be balanced. So I'm getting them so that they're as level as they can be. So there we go. I'm now going to take some of my ink that I've got and I'm just going to take a little bit of this excess off the edges and let's just ink this and just distress it a little bit so it's not quite so white. So you can see I'm just picking up that little bit of ink I've got. Try not to go straight onto your cardstock when you are inking because the last thing you want is to get a really, in fact, let me turn it over and show you what happens. If you do this, look, you can end up with, let me get a bit more, you can end up with this happening. So you get like a blob and we don't want that. So off the edge and then onto your cardstock and I'm just taking off the edge of the white so it's not quite so stark and it starts to all blend together remember what I said about making sure you stick things down mine could have been done with being stuck a tiny bit more but I'm happy with that and now my pictures so be kind to one another and there she is grace hmm. I love that you can tell stories with your scrapbook pages and finally those lovely lovely tulips perfect for this time of year where would they go oh let's have a think about it and move these around maybe leading into that picture leading over the edge gosh so many choices but that is part of the fun of us being able to scrapbook. So telling a story using your dies and your backing papers, not just for card making, but for a little bit of scrapbooking too. I'm just going to move on to another page. I'm going to pop that to one side and show you another quick idea. So here I have got my, again, a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock. And I've now got three different backing papers but you can see how actually I've got four of them you can see how they're telling a story so I've got the birds going through them I've got the houses and then the musical notes so they're all mixing and matching with each other and I'm going to work with just one of them and it's going to be this piece I'm just going to go back into my cutter now when I was cutting earlier the blade caught a couple of times so I'm just checking it just making sure that there isn't a piece of card just stuck in there that is something that's catching on the edge of that blade so it doesn't seem to be but it isn't quite fitted in that in there properly well, that's it so it was stuck just that little bit okay so here we go again and just trimming this down so you'll notice on the last one I used actually squares on this one I'm going to use rectangles and I don't I'm going to save the bird for a different project because I don't need it for this one so I'm going to move those out of the way and that one is going to go in the middle it's going to take this piece which has come from the previous kit just take off a tiny little bit of my paper now you'll have noticed I'm not measuring if you were if you were here at right at the very beginning everybody I didn't measure then I'm a little bit of you know by eye kind of person I look at something but one other little trick for you take your piece of card that you've got and I'm just now looking at how I can get this to have a perfect border so if I take it so that both ends and both corners are absolutely together and I come out by double the distance that I want as a border on that side so you can, I can pull it in like I've got there and I trim the other side in the same way we will get a really 
perfect border. So let's just take that off, move that out of the way, and I'll show you what I mean. So there, it's all lined up beautifully. So that's going to sit in the middle of my page, but we are going to just offset it slightly like that. I'm not worrying that the lines come down the page where my musical notes would have gone across because actually you can't really tell that they are musical notes. And then I've got my panels now. So here's the first one. These are much, much larger. So might you, for instance, overlay your scrapbook photographs so that they go something like this. And then you may even want to take your lace panels and tuck them so they come over the edge. So let me take that panel to there. I've got one here that is very much of the colour that we've got. Oh, when you see that blue, that's really jarring, isn't it? So let's turn that round and take it the other way. So I now need to think about which parts of the design you can actually see because we wouldn't want you to be it to be obvious that the bird's upside down, but I don't think you're going to notice that. So I'm going to bring that down there. We're starting to build our page and get the balance of it right. Then I've got some flowers here. Might just take those up the page. So my photograph would come here. And the next thing I'm going to do is take this. So this is actually one of the dies and it is an over the edge cross, but I've chosen to use this and I'm going to snip into it. It's really simple and easy to do. Anywhere that it's held in the cardstock will be a little pip and that's a tiny little bridge of card. And as you break them, it releases it and you can see it coming free. So you just let the scissors break those bridges and they really, they are just a few fibers of card and follow that round so that I just end up with the most perfect design. And it's interesting because there's no way that you would ever cut this by hand. And before die cutting came along, I used to spend so much of my time cutting out and actually was quite proud. I was good with a craft knife, but I rarely pick up a knife now because it's, oh, except to eat my dinner, of course. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Anyone think I, I don't use my knife and fork properly? Oh, mum, of course I do. Um, but yes, I don't use my knife anymore because it's so easy to die cut and it makes us all just do the most fabulous designs. Right, so I'm looking at this and I want this cross to go up here to remind me of the person that's going to sit in this picture. But it's lost in the background. So I need to look and think about how else I can change it. So what about if I swap my lace round? Let's take a look at that. So I swap my lace and I can bring this one back up so it's the right way up. Take that over the edge of the white so that I've got more of the white showing. I'm going to bring this together. So I've got those borders together. Let's bring this one down to maximize that image. I think that needs to come down as well. Put this up here, line all of that up. I've got a spare piece underneath there, which I can get rid of. I'm just gonna move that out of the way. Put that in place. My cross is gonna go here. So that now really stands out and is telling my story. My flowers can go across the edge. I can keep those coming across the edge of my page so that the story I want some more. Actually, do you know what? I think that's just as lovely as it could be with what I've got there. So maybe just one more last little thing. Let's take this one and tuck it behind and get some extra dimension and almost like a shadow with that second layer. Ready to put my photograph in the middle here and maybe a little tag with some special memories or a little bit of journaling up there but what we really want you to do and what I would love you to do is find your photographs sit down for the afternoon and get out your dies and just enjoy those happy memories and don't forget to check us out on Create and Craft so thank you so much everybody it's been a real pleasure and I can't wait to see you again